Welcome back. If you're just joining the series, you may consider watching the setup video so you're ready to keep coding and learning. In this video, we will begin to learn about CSS layout, including block elements, inline elements, and what is called the box model. Check the video description for a link to an article with the video transcript and code samples from this lesson. To begin this lesson, open our project in VS Code. If you are just joining us, you can download the starter project to catch up. See the link in the video description. In the terminal, type the start command, npm run start, to run the project. Let's copy the index.html file as a starting point and name the copy css-box-model.html. We're going to create an outline of today's lesson so that this becomes a reference for you as we continue learning CSS. First up, an H1 for our title of CSS box model, then an H2 for block elements, and one for inline elements. Next, we're going to use a different method for including CSS styles. In the head, remove the link to the style.css file and in its place, we'll add a style, opening, and closing tags. All the CSS we'll write today will go within this block. Now it's time to add our first block element, which will be a div. We have used a div before in our HTML lessons. Include the text div to identify it visually on the rendered page in the browser. Within the style tags, we'll add what's called a comment which is designated with a slash asterisk followed by your comment text and closed with an asterisk slash. Our comment will be block elements to serve as a reminder of the significance of this CSS rule. Below the comment, we'll write a rule for div that will make it visible in the browser with the definition outline one pixel solid red. Save, and let's view it in the browser. You'll see there is now a red border around the boundary of the div element, which goes nearly from edge to edge of the browser window. This is what makes div a block element. Block elements, by default, fit like full width blocks on the page. Let's open the inspector to review the styles inherited by the browser. You'll see our rule for the outline and a separate rule that is noted as user agent style sheet, which means the inherited browser styles. The one definition in the browser rule is display block. However, this rule by itself doesn't explain why it's not touching each edge of the browser. So let's travel up to the nearest ancestor of the div, which is the body tag. Aha! With the body tag highlighted with inspector, you can see an orange border which fits the gap between the div and the browser window. Under the user agent style sheet styles for body, there is a definition being inherited that defines margin eight pixels. Margins are one property involved in the box model, and a margin defines the space around an element. Margins can be applied to all four sides of an element at once, such as the single eight pixels in the browser definition, or one at a time, such as margin-top eight pixels, or to each side by a shorthand within the margin definition, such as margin, eight pixels, space, 10 pixels, where the first number is the vertical value, so 8 pixels for top and bottom, and the second number is the horizontal value, so 10 pixels for left and right. We'll get more familiar with assigning values to margin as we continue the CSS lessons. Let's expand the rule we assign to div to also apply the outline on body. We can do this by adding a comma after div and including body. Save and check it out in the browser. The outline applied to body is now surrounding all the content on the page 
and is flush with the outline applied to the div. You can also see it has the same gap between the outline and the browser window because the outline property sits on the boundary of the element. If we use Inspector on the body now, you can see how the margin is the space outside the boundary of the body. The corresponding property of margin for the CSS box model is called padding. Padding is applied inside of the element's boundary, whereas margin is applied to the outside. In our style block, let's add a new comment as the first thing with the content box model. Then let's add a rule for body to define padding 20 pixels and save. Now there is a space between the outline of body and the outline designating the div boundary. Open Inspector and you'll see it has added a helpful green highlight to the space created by the padding rule we added. Like margin, padding can also be applied to all four sides with a single value, or one side like padding-left, or via the shorthand method, just like margin. There's one more rule to complete the box model, which is border. This is the preferred property over outline for styling an element's boundary, but we'll leave the outline for demonstration purposes. Let's add a border definition for body with border three pixels dotted blue, then save and review in the browser. The border has been applied to the inside of body in comparison to the outline, with the padding being applied between the border and the content of body. We can select body in Inspector again to have its highlighting help identify the space from margin in orange and padding in green. Let's include div in the rule we have for body to have it receive the padding and border definitions. Then let's copy a second div after our first and save. You'll see the two divs have their outlines appearing merged. This is due to not having any margin definitions on our div. We can add a new rule and we'll include what's called the adjacent CSS selector, which is the plus sign. Using this, we can write div plus div as our selector for this rule, which means apply the following definitions to a div only if it's directly following, also known as adjacent, to another div. Then we'll define margin-top 20 pixels. Save, and let's see what happened in the browser. If we highlight our first div, you'll see no margin rule has been added. If we select the second one, the inspector reveals an orange highlight for the margin top rule. The take home here is, use margin for space between elements and padding for space within elements. Now you know the basics about the box model. To round out this lesson, let's identify a few more block elements and then review common inline elements. Building on our HTML lessons, let's add the other block items you have learned, main, article, and typography elements. We'll add them semantically. So first up is our main tag, which will enclose the article, and within that will be an H2 for article title, and then a single paragraph. Use any text you like. Save and check it out in the browser. At this point, you may have been able to anticipate that there wouldn't be any visual indication of the nesting of these block elements. Just to emphasize it for this lesson, let's write a rule and use the universal selector to quickly select all elements within the main tag. So the selector will be main, comma, main, asterisk, which says, the main tag, and also any elements within main, with the definition, outline, one pixel solid red, and padding, 20 pixels. Save, and you'll see this has applied the outline and padding to main, article, and the H2 and P tags. In addition, if we inspect the H2 and P tags, 
you'll notice they have inherited margin rules set by the browser. During our future capstone lessons, we will cover what's commonly known as a style reset that is typically included to remove or reset styles like that margin. Okay, now let's switch to inline elements. The first of these is the span tag. So let's add that as the first item under our H2 for inline elements and include the content of span. Then let's create a new comment in our style block for inline elements and add our rule for span with the definition outline one pixel solid green. After saving, you'll see that the span has been added and the difference from block elements is pretty clear. Inline elements default to taking up only the max width of their content and will break onto multiple lines if the content is long. If we inspect this span, you'll see there isn't actually a rule defined for display inline. That's because the assumed display value is inline if none other is defined. Let's copy the span a few more times and save and see what happens. The spans have stayed in a line relative to each other, with the space in between essentially equaling the size of a space character. Like our block elements, we can apply padding and margin. So let's try that by adding the following to our span rule. Padding, 5 pixels, and margin, 10 pixels. And then save, and let's review the outcome. Using Inspector, we can highlight each span and see how the margin and padding have been applied. But something seems off about the top and bottom margin. It seems they don't exist. This is a quirk of inline elements, which is that vertical margins are not applied due to the algorithm that creates the virtual line for inline elements to live within. We'll look at how to change this behavior in future lessons. Additional inline elements that were introduced in the HTML lessons include text formatting tags, such as strong and M, as well as the A tag for links. So let's add those. Save, and as you may have guessed, these have continued along the same line as our existing span tags. As we continue our CSS lessons, we will also continue learning about the box model and additional display properties that enable layout within CSS. Stay tuned for the next video where we will learn about essential CSS properties and the class selector. Be sure to subscribe. And if you're interested in early access to the final course videos and other future perks, support this project on Patreon. The link is in the video description.